Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. And guess what? We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Christian and the culture. Today, we're going to discuss a component of the word of God that we are sure is going to touch your heart. That's right. Our topic today is forgiveness mm -hmm. and why it's so important that we learn to walk in forgiveness. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce to you my co-host for this broadcast, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon from Tabernacle Harvest Church and Pastor Tim Baldwin from Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Gentlemen, would you greet our audience, please? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bishop and Christian and Culture family. Listen, you already got the memo for today's topic. It's a hot one. Move the coffee table, invite all your friends. Let's get ready. I'm loving it. Christian and the Culture family, what's happening? So glad you guys joined us today, and uh, let's go, gentlemen. Let's go. <laughs> let's jump in. You know, our topic today <laughs> is not without controversy because one of the passages really speaks to an area of our lives that we just really don't deal with in a significant fashion. The first passage comes out of Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, where Jesus says, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. But if you do not forgive men for their trespasses, here comes the, the very difficult passage. He says, Your Father will not forgive you. Mm. Now, I need you to try just for like 10 seconds, <laughs> imagine God not providing forgiveness. We're going to ask our, our brothers here to share with you their insight on this very powerful, powerful lesson. Why is this the only passage outside of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that Jesus says God will not give forgiveness? Mm. You know, I think I think Jesus is really alluding to the <clears throat> gravity of forgiveness and how important forgiveness is. Um, uh, just so everyone knows, it's, it's not a salvation text. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's not a text that, that, that speaks to uh, us losing salvation, right. but it does speak to uh, the heart of really obeying God's command to, uh, to forgive mm -hmm. and how serious that is. It is a very serious issue, and uh, it, it, it almost sounds like a legality. Almost? Uh, well, not almost. It does. It yeah. is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a heavy. Because I'm getting ready to jump on what he said. In okay. A second. Go ahead. Go ahead. You <laughs> no, can no, jump no, you on. Go ahead. You go ahead. Right. So it's a legality. So forgiveness is the hallmark of of the kingdom. Uh, you, you you must do it for others in order for forgiveness to happen for you. And you know, for God to say there's something that He may not excuse, you know, it's a big deal. You've got to get onto on board with the idea of what forgiveness is how to implement it and how to walk in it. It's are we way. are we formatting an understanding of this verse based on our understanding of the nature of God or are we taking this verse literally? I think the nature, the nature of God. I, I think partially both, you know, there, there has it has a literal nature to it. But in it, you hear the heart of God like, you know, God, he, he, he reeks forgiveness. It's not that he has to. Uh, it, it's a demand. It's a commandment. Almost you must operate in some level of forgiveness in order to be in this kingdom. It, it's just. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's the heart of God. I don't yeah. it, because if, if you look at it literally, then it means that if I don't forgive my brother, then then my salvation is in is in question. My why wouldn't it be? Because I don't believe that Jesus is saying it because because it, now his death would be null and void mm -hmm. if if I say that I don't forgive, if, if he says that you, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. And again, my understanding is Jesus is really thoughts about the gravity of forgiveness. How is it that God can forgive us of our sins? We know if you look in the, uh, I think, I believe it's in Matthew's gospel where it has the same story mm -hmm. where uh, <clears throat> it's, it's the story of the, uh, uh, the merciful uh, uh, of a master, mm -hmm. right? And, and you go through that whole story and it's it's really speaking to the hypocritical heart. Whereas why is it that 
if God can forgive me for, for my sins and my offenses, mm -hmm. why is it that you can't forgive others right. who sin against you? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really a sign of my salvation. OK. It's a sign that that God has worked in me, worked on my heart. Your heart uh, right. Yeah. And enough for me yeah. to say, you know what, regardless of what what is said or done, forgiveness is my posture. Yes. Are we running the risk <laughs> of westernizing the passage as opposed to just dealing with it in its simplicity? I, I mean, I, it, it appears that most Christians look at this passage and they look for the trap door <laughs> of, you know, legitimizing behaviors based upon a preconceived knowledge of God. Yeah. Jesus makes it very clear. If you don't forgive people their sins, your father will not forgive you. Will not forgive you. Pastor Tim connects the salvation aspect to yes. it. Okay, I can take part of that because he's not <laughs> talking to Christians. True. Okay. That's very true. So he's talking to people, and he's his 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 whole concept here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where this text is coming from, yeah. his sermon on the mount, he's dealing with unveiling the principles of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. And yeah. the principle of the kingdom is love and forgiveness. Absolutely. All right. So God says. If you don't forgive other people, God can't forgive you. Yeah. God will not. I shouldn't say can't. He yes. says will not forgive you. So it's an act of the will. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why, why, do, why would Jesus say God will not forgive you? Why not? I, I'm going to go back on the limb on this. This is a legality from the kingdom of heaven. And if, if there was a court of law in heaven, this is one of those that's an infraction. So if you don't forgive... It's almost as if he's saying, in God's eternal kingdom, you cannot be forgiven. It is a legality, and you, you can't negotiate it away. You've got to learn how to operate in it in order to be accepted or, you know, ha have some ranking or good in this kingdom. You're going to need it. It's an infraction. Can, but can we say it's a legality, though? Because, because when we use words like legality connected to Christ, and in 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 God's kingdom, yeah, isn't that a fine line between works? I don't Old think Testament. So. If if we again, if we use that term, I understand exactly what you're saying. No, I, I know you but if we it. use the term legality, it almost puts us in a position where that's a part of our works, that's a part of our responsibility. Whereas we all know that we we can't earn salvation, we can't earn forgiveness. No, you, you know what I'm saying. So if we say legality, that for me and my mind, like my antennas go up, sure, sure. and we say legality, it almost f feels like we're saying that you have to do this to get that. You have to. You have to, you know, again, we're talking about from a, a, a salvific perspective as well. Yeah. Even within a salvific nature, it, it runs off of love and forgiveness. Absolutely. Right. And when I say legality, I mean, if if we don't view heaven as some atmospheric, but it is an actual place in that place, forgiveness is currency. It, it is how it operates. It is how. It sees you and it almost gives the text like there is a spiritual, I'll put spiritual in, <laughs> spiritual <laughs> legality from Do you heaven. you go again, Pastor Brian? I, I, I got to say legality <laughs> from the standpoint that it is something written eternally as to whether you forgave others or not. And Jesus makes this one of the only emphatic statements that he makes concerning you not being able to be forgiven. If you can operate in this, this is how the kingdom works. There is a spiritual <laughs> law <laughs> that says that there's something about forgiveness you and I are going to have to work out in our salvific nature in order for entrance. And I don't know the totality of it, but it seems like a very distinct line that you have to cross it. And so my question is, what is... What is the fallout of that? What is the result of the unforgiveness? God doesn't forgive you. Right, but the ultimate, because again, okay, God doesn't forgive me, but ultimately, does that mean that I'm, I'm saved? Right. Does it mean, <laughs> I know where you're going with Right, this. does it mean, because again, it, 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 it's not, Jesus yeah. is not seeing it from a salvation perspective. Yeah. But the gravity of, in other words, you and I don't, there's, there's no option for us.
when it comes to forgiveness. Okay. It's not. And if there's no option, then what happens when we don't? There's a scripture in the Bible. There's a text uh, when we talked about, when I talked about, I believe it's in Matthew's gospel about the, the, um, the unmerciful. Yes. Sure. Yes. That's, that's and in um, that Matthew text, 18. Right. Yeah. And in that text, at the end of it, it talks about, um, be, because this servant is unmerciful, his servant says that I'm going to give you over to the tormentors right. until you repay. Right. And when you look at that word tormentors, it really speaks to a, a thought process of, of guilt, right. Right. And guilt. shame, right, right. internally. Right. Yeah. right. Like I'm going to give you over to that. Like right. your conscience will be, right. will be, will be tormented. Sure. Will right. be, you know. And right. so, so we're given over to that, and, and that lack of peace yeah. that we have is there when when unforgiveness happens. Because Jesus says, "So shall my Father do to, to you, you yes. if you don't from your heart forgive others." Right. Yes. Right. So now you're seeing. Yes. You know how this comes together. Right. You know, the 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 concept of the lack of internal peace. Right. You know, the removal of joy. Right. You know, the frustration that comes and we go to God and say, oh, Lord, why is this happening? Yeah. He says, because you're not forgiving you people. That yeah. virus is alive in you. And yeah. if you do forgive, yeah. then you're able to forego right. that because yeah. I give you right. peace. Yeah. 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 Because the concept right. for me in, in chapter six where he says, if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive you. I've always processed that down these lines. Yeah. Forgiveness can only come when repentance is exercised. True. True. If your heart is so hard that you can't forgive others, right. how do you repent? Right. If you don't repent, God can't forgive you. Yeah, I mean, the whole message of the gospel is repent, turn yeah. from it. Yeah, right. yeah. But if I'm so hard in my heart that yeah. I'm walking around with this in me, yeah. God can't forgive you. Yeah. So Jesus seems to me to be saying, this is so important to yeah. God that you walk in forgiveness. Yeah. That God is saying, if you don't exercise forgiveness, I'm going to allow the hardness of your heart to keep you from me. It can swallow you. Absolutely. Yes. It is its own law. <laughs> well, you, you're right. It's, it's a principle. Concept. Yeah, it's you're a principle. In, in, in the concept, it's, it's legal. In the concept, it's legal. Yes, yes, but yes. In, a more, in a more applicable position, it's consequential. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's the I consequence agree. of I unforgiveness yes. is disconnection from God. Absolutely. Right. I mean, how do right. I walk in the spirit of God if I'm not willing to forgive you right. yeah. for your trespass? Absolutely. And I go to God and say, Father, will you forgive me? He says, right. how? Right. How? You're right. not even sensitive enough right. to see yes. that someone else is asking you for forgiveness. Right. Hence, we have the story yeah. of Matthew 18, yeah. which is a beautiful story. Yeah. Beautiful story. You know, the guy yeah. comes in and he has he he's he's like 50. $50,000 in debt. Yeah, and, yeah. and 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 uh, uh, the other guy forgives him for his 50, but he can't forgive somebody for their 100. That's exactly yeah. right. Which it's is what we thing. do yeah. when thing. God saves us. Yes. And then we go out and we get angry because you took my parking space. You know, you, you have the better job. Yeah. And we hold the grudge yeah. rather than yeah. trying to understand that I should be I, I should be an instrument of forgiveness. Jesus brings the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Pastor Brian. Jesus no, brings the whole kingdom of darkness down. Yes. Everything. On that cross. Everything. When he says, Father, forgive them. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Forgive the people. Uh, I mean, this is direct. This yes. is, and it, but was he demonstrating that you're going to have to take care of this before you get off the planet? But let's not, let, 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 let's not paint a picture for our audience that says this is a simple action. No, it's not. Not simple at but all. But Jesus, Jesus, in Matthew 18, he's, if you read it from the beginning, he says, he starts off and says, the kingdom is like this. Yes. This is not a kingdom. This is what the kingdom is. This yes. is, this is how, the kingdom is like yep. this, this, this taskmaster who forgives a great debt. Yes. That's what the kingdom is about. And that's yeah. the principle. That's the principle. Yeah. So you see, I, the, the kingdom is the principle. One of the principles of the kingdom is forgiveness. You have to do it. But you let's, be, let, let, let's be more um, psychological. Sure. Uh, unforgiveness is not usually the first action without connection. True. In other words, people who are unforgiving are usually unforgiving because of prior actions. Sure, sure. Yeah. I've always understood that 
my action towards you yes. in many cases isn't due to you, True. but it's due to something Pastor Tim did. Right, Absolutely. Right. And I just let it fester and yeah. right. you catch it. You're the recipient. Right. Yeah. So if we're talking biblical forgiveness, yeah. It really goes further than the person who offended us. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it may take a journey. Yeah. And, and I think the idea of a spiritual integrity is walking in a journey of forgiveness. Yeah. It, you'll never just forgive one person. you got to forgive others as they come along. And then there's that, that trip back. You know how even, true that is? Yes, sir. When I was in fourth grade, we had bus matrons because I was bused to a school, yeah. <laughs> and the bus matron was there to keep discipline in order. But they also administered discipline at the school. Yes. So I was unjustly uh, uh, criticized for something, and I was really innocent. I'm, I'm not saying I wasn't. Yes. I, I, was, I was genuinely innocent. Sure. What I did uh, was a mistake. I was pulling a pencil, and I scratched one of my classmates' arms. She sure. went up and told the teacher, Eric scratched me on the arm, but he didn't mean it. He, the teacher told the bus matron, I was in fourth grade. Mm. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. Fourth grade. And she had this belt. They used to call it the general. Mm. And she slapped my hands with oh, the yeah, general six times. Days. Wow. Six times. Wow. I was in fourth grade. Wow. I hated her in fourth grade. Wow. Yeah, right? Really couldn't do a thing about it. She's an sure. adult. I couldn't do a thing about sure. it. Sure. So many years later, I'm pastoring a church. Right? I'm not in fourth grade anymore. <laughs> I'm grown, married, wow. got kids, right? Sure. <laughs> I'm standing up preaching 1 Corinthians 13. Mm. The Lord speaks to me. One of the few times he's ever spoken audibly. He said, how can you preach this and you still hate Mrs. Durr? Wow. wow. That's real. I hadn't oh. forgiven her. Wow. I had to wow. go find Mrs. Durr, whom the Lord kept alive. She was 80-some years old. Wow. And I had to wow. go to her house and say, I'm sorry, I wow. hated you for what you did. Wow. wow. <laughs> and then the release of the anointing sure. came in a greater way. Sure. Right. Wow. I had her in my prison. For a yeah. long time. Wow. That was a journey. From fourth grade. Fourth grade. Wow. Yeah. That's... And that's common. Wow. Yes. That's yeah, common. Yeah, we yeah. hold on to yeah. things and we don't process things well. Absolutely. Which, which, which harbors bitterness yeah. and which ultimately turns into unforgiveness. And so, so yeah, it's, it's like you said, Bishop, it, yeah. it, it's, it's mostly uh, previous and prior occurrences yeah. in your life that brings you to those places of unforgiveness. Yeah. You know, it could yeah. be with the same person, yeah. but, yeah, yeah. but again, it's, it's almost like there's a series of infractions that Absolutely. happen that hardens my heart. Wow. And so, and so it, Jesus says the kingdom is like, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not hardened hearts, <laughs> yes. but it's about forgiveness. So you now know, take that, yes, sir. take that, yes, sir. that concept right there, mm -hmm. look at forgiveness and then it really becomes a matter of the heart of the person involved yeah. where they have to investigate, mm -hmm. why am I holding the grudge against you? Sure, Absolutely. sure. It cannot sure. be from a singular action. It's never singular. No, it is not. No, it is not. It, it, yeah, and that's the emotional wrestling match that everyone has yeah. with forgiveness. You may not have it in a lot of other areas. Right. Forgiveness is the area that you will wrestle because in your heart and mind, you feel legitimized by your thoughts. But, but also there's another person involved. So you, you have to wrestle with both of those. And, mm. you know, the scripture doesn't really give you the, the method in how you do it. It simply tells you to do it, right? I think we have at least time to talk about how can you do that. And for you, Bishop, it was I needed to go and physically say I'm sorry for that. Yeah. And, and really be released from it because... Yeah. Had you not done that, you, you could have wrote a letter. It may not have meant the same. Mm -hmm. You know, forgiveness could be different in each of us, how we need to kind of release that and really show a real demonstration of it. And, and what real. about, what about, because it's inevitable, somebody's watching this yeah. who, who needs to forgive someone yeah. who passed away. Wow. wow. Yeah. I, I never That's forget. Tough, I never forget being at church one Sunday wow. years ago and Bishop said, you have to forgive. There is somebody in your life that you did not forgive and they passed away. Yeah. Yeah. That wow. You have to release That's that individual. Man, I had to come to the altar yeah. and really ask the Lord to forgive me and help Same. me to release those emotions yeah. and feelings yeah. about this individual that had gone on to be with the Lord. That's real. That's and, so real. And somebody's watching today and you might have to do the same exact thing. Absolutely. You might have to ask the Lord to release you 
from those emotions and that pain. And, and it's, it's real pain. Oh, it's real. It's yeah. a real place. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't yeah, live yeah. the rest of your life hating an individual that has gone on to be but with the Lord. But the person who was sexually abused as a child, now they're an adult. Uh, yeah. And they're, they're, they're dealing with the shame, the yep. guilt, sure, yeah. the anger, and all of those things. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult it's for us difficult. to sit in a position sure. and say, oh, you got to forgive that sure. person. Not sure. Easy. And so they've easy. gone through that. Yeah. How can they get to this place? Yeah. You you have to go through a process of being strengthened yeah. in terms of who you are personally. Yeah. You have to go through a process of being being yeah. strengthened. You have to go through a process of unpacking all of the emotions. And as I said, because I would never minimize right. someone's hurt because sure. it's they're real places. We we pastor, so we hear these stories oh, yeah. and, yes. and we oh, see yeah. them all the time and we oh, know yeah. how serious they are. Yeah. And we would never just say, just get over it and forgive them. No, no that's the absolutely. the process is I need to go somewhere yeah. where I can be strengthened by someone yeah. who can help me unpack yeah. the story of my life. Mm -hmm so that I can come to a place of, of love, loving myself again yeah, yeah. enough where I can, I, can be re I can release this individual yeah. from the prison of my heart. It takes time. It's a process. It, it, yeah. But I'm telling it, you, yeah. in Christ Jesus, you can do it. The Lord can release you. Yeah. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, I want to put this out to you guys. Uh, the individual recognizes there's some bitterness, uh, some injustice that's been done to mm -hmm. me and I'm angry about it. Yeah. How can I be angry without mm. harboring unforgiveness? Is it possible? I don't think so. I, 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 you know, for there to have been some level of transgression or infraction against a person, I think anger keeps you focused on the wrong, right? I, at some point, you will have to say, Lord, infuse my heart with your love and, and, and possibly Help me to see this individual as you do. Because until then, I'm probably gonna hold this on for as long as I need to. Mm -hmm. so, so there has to be some kind of heart change, of even a revelation, if you will, as to how God sees them. Because it's possible a person that hurt you in your past could be born again now and going to heaven. Mm. Yeah. You can't be there with unforgiveness. Yeah. Persons going through unforgiveness right now watching us, yeah. first step out would be what? First step out is acknowledging the fact that you, you have unforgiveness in your heart. Yeah. That's the first step, to acknowledge it and just call it what it is. Yeah. Just say, you know what, I, I have been hurt, I have become bitter, yeah. and I have unforgiveness in my heart. Lord, help me to process through this. And again, because the emotions are real. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a real place. Forgiveness is one of the hardest principles of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. It, it, it just is. is because we, we, most of us grew up in a place where it's just like, okay, if someone does something to you, you get even. You better believe it. You know, you, right. get, you disconnect, you get even, and you yeah. move on with your and life. You and then moving. you have all yeah. of these relationships that are broken, and you're carrying all of these broken pieces yeah. from relationships that turn into bitterness and unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it really impacts your life. It's, it, it's, it's like the young husband or wife who, who had a bad relationship and says, I'm never going to allow anybody else to ever treat me that way again. That's right. right. That's you right. get into a marriage. Right. And the, 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 anything that is a semblance of yeah. <laughs> yeah. what happened in the past, but, but it's really not that. Yeah. You begin to build this wall. Triggers it, yeah. And because right. of the bitterness and that's unforgiveness, right. you can't even have a fruitful can't relationship with your spouse. That's very wow. true. Well, my friends, we've come to the end of this program, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to promise you that we are going to continue this dialogue in our next sessions because forgiveness and unforgiveness, while they are on opposite ends of the spectrum, they are critical. You know, we, we aren't to walk in unforgiveness, yeah. but we must understand what's causing the bitterness yeah. and how it can prevent the flow of the love of God. So it's going to be more than just one one session. We're yes. going to have to come back later yes. at another time. And we're going to keep going because we want you to see how God forgives us and God fully expects us to forgive others. So we're going to talk about how you forgive. Forgiving and forgetting are not synonymous. So don't go around saying, oh, if you don't, if you don't forget it, you don't forget. No, for me, I look at it like this. If somebody steps on your foot in a, in a crowded theater, 
and they say, oh, forgive me, I'm sorry. You say, oh, okay, I forgive you. But if they walk through again, you're going to move your foot That's right. because you remember they hurt you. So we want right. you to understand the difference. But yeah. thanks for joining us today. Wow. I'll tell you, Tom just gets away from us. <laughs> Keep on praying for us. Keep on writing to us those yes. emails. We thank God for you. And we're happy that we are encouraging you and blessing you with the word and the presence of our Lord Jesus. It is our prayer that you keep walking with the Lord. Stand by him because he will stand by you. Thanks for joining the Christian and the culture. And remember, you keep standing for Jesus in these last days and he will stand by you yes. at the judgment seat. Yes. God bless you. See you real soon. The Christian and the culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. God knows more than what he has revealed to you. You're dealing with an infinite God, and he doesn't have to tell you everything. Doctrine are the words that Jesus left. One of the main things we're called to do as the body of Christ, how we're going to win and overcome, is by keeping the doctrine. Now, the little horn is what we would call the Antichrist. Satan has always had somebody prepared to come to that position in every generation. People of God are raving about the Understanding End Time Events and Prophecy Conference. Ryan says, this conference broke down the scriptures into pieces that I could easily understand. Kyle offers, this conference helped bring a greater sense of urgency for me to share with the world the hope that lies within us as sons and daughters of God. And Doug adds, I would recommend any believer serious about their Bible to take a look at what this conference has to offer. This four session conference of teaching and dialogue will help you to better comprehend what the scriptures say about the last days. For your love offering of $30 or more, receive a copy of the entire seminar on CD or DVD. Call 1-800-550-3284 to order your copy today. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry, visit BethelDeliverance.org. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.